Hi there, it's Roy Breton here from A Countryman's View. Hope you're doing well. Today the title on my thumbnail reads Christians slaughtered but no press protests. So we're, um, we're hearing lots of protests like this. Um, this is just one of um, one of the marches over a Gaza protest and we've, we're seeing lots of these all over the news and no one wants to see innocent people killed. However, often the main the mainstream media doesn't really uh, report the truth and we have to look look at things um, in a deeper way and uh, cross-reference things sometimes to make sure that um, we are hearing the truth so here um, I've put it up my search in Twitter is Nigerian Christian and it says Nigerian Christians getting slaughtered and you don't see the squad caring about human rights or black lives matter the entire discourse is fake. It's embarrassing to believe anyone is operating under anything close to universally applicable moral principles. And uh, here we see, I think this lady was actually killed last year, to be fair. I think this is, although it's a new tweet, I think it's probably last year when this happened, from what I understand. But even so, it says Muslim mad dogs burn Christian woman to death. Her crime, she didn't commit a crime. The Nigerian girl, Deborah Yakuba was stoned and burned to death as a Islamist student at a college accused her of blasphemy. Where are all the liberals on this one? No signs, no chanting. And it's true, um, no one wants to see wars or anything. We need to, we need to get the truth out, out and uh, people need to be able to see what's really happening. Here on uh, Telegram, Amir put this up uh, a few days ago. It says yesterday 140 Christians were killed in 20 villages in Nigeria. In one village only two toddlers were left alive. Anyone care, cares about the massacre? Any protests in European cities? Any UN condemnation? Nobody cares, which is very sad. And then here, um, this, this tweet, 500,000 killed in Syria. 380,000 killed in Yemen, 240,000 killed in Afghanistan, 500,000 killed in Sudan, 300,000 killed in Iraq. It's fine. No doctors against genocide. And uh, here we see where, it's, where this has been set up, November 2023. And you... Um, a new Twitter account etc. It's amazing how they come up with these things and yet we don't hear anything about this. It's all about Gaza protests as we see here. Um, lots of tweets about um, about Gaza here etc. And then finally um, here's something from Peter Sweden on Twitter. Here's something you don't hear on the news. 360 million Christians live under severe persecution worldwide. 50,000 Christians in Nigeria have been murdered for, the faith, for their faith in the last 14 years. Christians are the most persecuted group on the planet. And he's put Christian Lives Matter, which is, uh, I've actually retweeted that. Um, so, let's go look at some scripture. So, if we look at um, Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And it seems like we've got all these protests and things going on and yet people only want to see one side of the story. I'm thankful that Jesus came to give life, life abundantly, and he came to give the truth. And we have the truth in the Bible and we know what's going on is kind of predicted in the Bible, prophesied, so we can't be too surprised. But when we know, know the truth, it does make it easier to understand and to see what's happening. And here in Romans 1, um, the just, uh, sorry, uh, God's wrath, uh, wrath on unrighteousness from verses 18 to 24, we can see all sorts of things. I won't read the whole lot, but it says, Therefore God gave them up to uncleanliness and the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, for, for who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. People only want to see what's what's right in their what's wrong or right in their eyes. They don't want to see the truth, and they don't want to see both sides of the stories. As the story, rather, it's good to uh, look at everything from both sides of the story. 
And then if we look at Proverbs 22, uh, 22 3. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the, sim but the simple pass on and are punished. And uh, we, we need to be wise in these things and look at what's going on. And then the final scripture here from Hosea 4 6 is My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you from be being priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will. I also will forget your children. Powerful words there from Hosea. And uh, it's important to remember that um, we have a future. The Christian has a future and uh, we have a lot to look forward to despite everything that's going on. And it's kind of frustrating when we see all these marches and people not telling the full truth and people chanting various slogans and uh, not really knowing what they're saying. So um, let's stand for truth, let's make a difference and uh, stand up for biblical principles. Here I've got a prayer that which, we, which is, um, if you're not a Christian here and um, you want to have the gift of eternal life and much more, it's a prayer I said about 26 years ago and if you'd like to say it after me if you're not a Christian, it reads, Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as Lord and Saviour of my life. I repent of all my sins and I ask you today to take over complete control of every aspect of my life. Amen. And if you said that prayer, it means your life. And if you said that prayer and you're, you meant it, it means your life will be changed and you will be having have the gift of eternal life. Now, sometimes this change is instant. With me, when I said yes, things started to change instantly. And... Uh, my thinking changed, the thoughts I had went away, bad thoughts and uh, good things came into my life. But it's good, um, as Christians we need to read the word and we should want to read the word. Uh, as there's so much in it, it may be an, an old book but there's so much in it that's right up to date. And uh, I'm reading from the Bible Gateway here which is a great resource, there's many other resources that you can use, um, including apps for your phone etc. Just to carry out a Google search and you'll find many many applications. It's also good to get in a good church and a small group if you can. Small groups help to um, uh, well, come bring new friendships and uh, it means you're able to ask questions and what have you and you can get to know the word quicker but just make sure whatever church you go to, small group, just make sure it's a strong group and that they believe in the, the Holy Bible fully you can't water the word down. The, the word is truth and um, we want to stand on that truth. We don't want to take anything taken out just for man's so-called benefit. The, those, those truths are in the Bible for a good reason. So if you've got any questions on my video, please feel free to comment. And thank you very much for watching.